This is very exciting. There's Atlantis. There's Electric Eel. And here's Emperor. My goodness. Good day everyone from SeaWorld San Diego. We're starting in the parking lot again to see Emperor updates. Cause look at this. Look, look at how much they've done on this coaster in like the two weeks I've been gone. This is incredible. Um, so we'll take a closer look at this ride from here and from the inside and also see what else is going on in the park. Now before we even start talking about what they have so far, last time I actually just drove up here and got out and recorded this because the whole parking lot was empty. Today, it is the busiest I have ever seen it. I'm actually parked way back there. Kind of amazing, but then again, it's end of December. So that is to be expected. All right, it's getting a little windy out, so if it's difficult to hear, that's why. But this looks like the loading station. And you can see, this is all that was built last time I came here. This is gonna have to be the end of the ride, I would imagine, because you can see they have the brake system set up. So come back, and at some point here, they're gonna have a station, I would imagine. This is probably it. But you can see that it curves around, and then this is where you're going up. Then you start to ascend. This is how the drop coasters work. You come around the side. I like the touch, they got the flag there, that's nice. And you can see the track just stops there. And yet, over here, they have the bottom portion of the drop. So they just kind of have to connect the line there to get the whole thing going. I'm moving over here to the right a little bit more. You'll see they actually have track pieces sitting back there, but this whole part of the lot has track as well. You may be able to see some curved parts over there. Moving to the left a little bit more, you can see this wood structure they're building, probably part of the queue. Interesting to see them making like a, a wooden structure. <laughs> Usually rides here at SeaWorld don't have much theming in the queues as far as coasters go. And that's where the turnaround is, and they got these other metal things going up as well. Here's the last view before we go in the park. And you'll see that's it. Turns around and starts heading up. I want to point out these kiosks because for past members, you can redeem all your rewards from here and they have a ton of rewards. Um, but I never really looked at anything above gold, but platinum gives you 11 different theme parks. For $213, that's a deal of the century. I actually think the price went up, the sticker might be old. So like, if I go to Orlando or you travel anywhere, there's 11 different parks. The Busch Gardens parks, the Aquaticas, the Sea Worlds, all of them. For that, for that much money. And you get up close parking and discounts, it's incredible. So if you're coming more than a few times and you travel, get that Platinum Pass. They are still doing the Christmas celebration here until it's either January 5th or 6th. Which is strange because it's actually longer here than it is in Orlando. I must say I'm impressed that every year since I've been coming here, they've opened a new coaster or ride. It's amazing. First they did Electric Eel, next year they did Tidal Twister, next year we get Emperor. It's awesome. Let's go around and check on it though from the inside of the park. I don't know if I've been back here during the day, but it is much calmer than it is in the evening. At least that opening night I came. And it's going to be strange once the Christmas celebration is over because this is all going to be empty again. What do you know, the 50% off Christmas merchandise signs are out. I feel like the Explorer Cafe changes their menu all the time. I remember when I first got fish, uh, fish tacos here, it was one huge piece of fish on one taco. Then it was two smaller fish and two separate tacos. Now they don't have it at all. Strange. They do have an Impossible Burger though, which I'll probably try sometime if it's still here. This is interesting. Last time I came here, this was all plywood building a stage. Now it's a mermaid grotto meet and greet. And it's spinning. Is the mermaid on the other side? Well, that's interesting. I guess they can't have a mermaid simply walking out. Even though the Christmas celebration is still going on, they swapped out the tops of all the signs around the park. For the inside look, they do this multiple times a year. The first one is from February 8th to March 1st. The sign of a busy day here at SeaWorld. Electric Eel is 15 minutes. I'm sort of half joking, but not really. After being on Orlando's journey to Atlantis, ours is just so tiny. All right, over here from what's gonna have to be the entrance, there's really no other way to get back here. That's obvious or clear at the moment. But you can see it, Emperor is happily standing tall. 
it's funny to look back when I thought that was like gonna be part of the ride. I guess it's still just a crane, but it hasn't moved at all. Soon we'll see this whole thing over here. I would like to point out that for a while I thought that was gonna be Mako. There was like rumors all over the internet that that's what was gonna be the new 2020 coaster. But thinking about it, that wouldn't make a good dive coaster. Because Mako in Orlando is definitely the best SeaWorld coaster I've ever been on. It's so smooth and nice hills. It wouldn't work as a dive coaster, so I'm glad it is Emperor instead of Mako. Now, Wild Arctic is actually going to have its last flight January 10th. I'm very excited about this because I always say it needs to be replaced or updated. The fact that they've acknowledged that and they're doing something is really, really good news. And there's a lot of space back there to do something. I hope they keep the Arctic theme, but who knows what they're doing or how long it'll take. The moving walkway is actually closed for the penguins. We're gonna have to go around this way, which looks pretty backed up. Wow, look what happens when you don't have the walkway. Everyone's just crowded up there on the second level. Really just wanted to come see the emperor penguins, which always seem to hide in this corner here. It's still kind of amazing this is the only place in North America you can see them. Of course, they say that on the website talking about the Emperor Coaster. I'd like to see one dive like you dive on the ride. I guess the walkway goes out of service enough for them to have installed tape that they just slide on over. Interesting. A special savings. 50% off Christmas merchandise. It's a sled with nothing in it. Is the sled for sale? The penguins outside are back. And you can see they did install an awning. Not full coverage, but little areas of shade for them if they so choose. And I feel like these signs on both ends are new as well. They look new. The funny thing to me here is this Holly Jolly Marketplace. For the season, they decorate all of this building here. But you'll see the second part has painted snowflakes. That stays year round because I've always noticed it up there. They never get rid of that, but everything else they will add and remove. Let's enter the vortex to check out some turtles. Jelly. So many turtles in one scene. I always love the steampunk stuff, but look at this, I have not seen these yet. They have pins. This one's like a orca. It's a SeaWorld on it, and an octopus. And those are $5.99. Very neat. I'd like to point out this backpack special they have. If you spend $25 or more, it's only 16 bucks. That is not bad at all. I was actually unaware they had a sea lion and seal encounter. I'm really going to have to look into that. It's so funny to see how small this is after being in Orlando. Take a look up at Dolphin Days, full showing. All of the back rows are filled. Looking at their big signs they have posted, I was checking to see if they had a coming soon section for Emperor, but it's off the, the map, so they're gonna have to make this whole thing bigger. Interesting. And I also noticed the inside look, but the Lunar New Year as well. I meant to do it last year, but for some reason didn't. I can't remember why, probably underway or something, but I definitely wanna try and do it this year. I really like this freshwater aquarium, but it's been closed for a long time now. It must be doing some big refurbishments in there. All right, I'm incredibly confused because the Cirque du Christmas show says it's showing here at the Mission Bay Theater. I was under the impression it was happening over at the the one over by the, the Sky Cars. Has it been here the whole time? I, I really can't believe that if that's the case. Somehow I've completely missed that. Coming back towards the waterfront area, they have a Santa sled. You can come sit in and take pictures. Look at the dolphin they got there. I really like that. Red and gold. And this is where I'm going crazy. See, this is where I thought the Cirque Christmas show was. Okay, so I'm not crazy. They have this sign out in front of the, I guess, Bayside Theater mission since that other one's the Mission Bay Theater. I'm thinking they must have moved it because they even have a thing showing you from here how to get over there. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure why they would have done it out here in the first place because you have to wait for it to be nighttime before you can do any shows. I don't know why it would need to be here unless it's to get more people. Maybe it had water involved, I actually never saw it. But that's a good idea to use that little theater because it 
hasn't been used in a while. Glad to see Title Twister up and running, but check out the sign. 50, oh, <laughs> it just changed. I looked over before I filmed, it said 50 minutes. Now it says 40. I still think that's pretty inaccurate. Maybe someday I'll try and collect SeaWorld pennies. I do like these Title Twister ones. All right, I really do think it will be a 40 minute wait because for some really odd reason, they're not using this side. That side has no one on it. Everyone in this line is actually going to this side. That's bizarre. A little too cold for this today. That would be the most annoying part, that water dripping. For some reason, the shipwreck menu always fascinates me. Now they went and replaced the whole thing. They didn't cover up any, and they just made it smaller. They went from like nine items to six. The dolphins are rather calm today. Hello. I think they recently added these here. Different dolphin heights. I am shorter than a dolphin, as I'm sure pretty much anybody else is. Not unless I walk out here. Taller than a dolphin. Look at this. That can't be their teeth. Can it? Manta behind me is clocking in a half hour wait. That's pretty wild. It's strange too to see Orlando have a Manta as well and then be so different. This coaster style is more like Mako. Uh, the lay down one though, I, I like them both. It's hard to pick a favorite, but that one down there is very intense. Put your stuff in a locker. SeaWorld has started doing a all season long dining plan for $119. This will really benefit me. And you get two meals a day, a lunch and a dinner. The problem is I'm never here long enough. I'm only here for a few hours at a time. But I come easily more than 20 times a year. If I got one meal every time, it would easily pay for itself. And then some. So nice little bonus there. This whole nicey grassy area in front of the Sky Tower is all boarded up. Strange, wonder what they're doing. Maybe it's something with the little river there. Here at Pies and Cinnamon Rolls, I thought it was just dessert pies, but they have short rib pie and turkey pies, along with cherry coke and apple pies. I think I'm gonna try a turkey pie. Would you look at that? They have the same hot chocolate cups as they do in Orlando. So I guess I could just bring mine over and get cheap refills. Here's a look at this pie, which was $4.99, but it's kind of like a puck. It's not like actually deep, see? The cinnamon rolls cost more, which makes me think it must be a massive cinnamon roll. I'm looking forward to getting back on the Sky Tower once it opens back up in January to get good views of Emperor as it's being built. Something I never really thought about, but part of the SeaWorld store is outside, and they have two things of plushes out here. Actually, and this too. What happens when it rains? Do these, I can see this one rolls, but do these ones roll? I, I guess they must. I haven't seen this stuff before. Got a shark picture frame. Sharks on mugs. Sharks in snow globes. So I actually went into the store since all the Christmas stuff is so cheap. I got some of the Christmas stuff for 50%. And again, if you spend 25, you can get this awesome backpack, which is normally 35 for 16. More importantly though, I got this adorable little penguin patch because someday in life I'm going to find myself a need of a penguin patch and I want to ensure that I'm ready and I think this is probably the cutest thing ever. They had three other penguins but this one beats them all. Merry fish to all and to all of fish night. All right that is going to do it. We're going to end here because one, well I got to walk all the way over here because I parked this far but two, so we can really get another look at this because I'm sure the next time I come that drop is going to be complete. I mean there is so much work done right here. This is awesome. I'm very excited to ride it next summer. It'll be one of the bigger coasters they have here. As fun as Tidal Twister and Electric Eel are, they're very compressed. They're very short and in a small area. This is a little more sprawling, and that's going to be awesome. The drop coasters are awesome. But that is going to do it. Thank you all for watching. The caravan is moving on.